Hi, this is Nathan with SparkFun Electronics. We're gonna be talking today about the magnetic card readers that we offer. There's two types of card readers. There's the basic card reader that reads cards, and then we also offer the card reader writer, and you can see it's quite a bit larger and uh, has a big magnetic uh, coil built in there so that you can actually write to the cards. The, the basic magnetic card reader is a little bit weird. You can see how small it is and that it has this RS-232 connector on it, um, and that's, uh, it seems like it's a hindrance at first because most computers don't have an RS-232 port on it, uh, but we can use a USB to RS-232 converter. This also makes it a lot easier to tear it apart and get to the TTL interface so that we can actually embed this reader into one of our projects. Whereas if we had a USB connector on there, it would have a bunch of extra circuitry that we'd have to avoid. So this makes it a little bit easier to use. Now I'd like to show you just how easy it is to use. So once we have the reader hooked up to the RS-232 serial port, you can see the green light comes on, and we've got TerraTerm open in the background at 9600 baud. So if we take just a regular old King Super's Grocery Club card and we swipe it, you can see a series of numbers show up. So the, the great thing about the magnetic card reader is it's really, really simple. All it does is it outputs the club card number, whatever this is, 8383, onto the screen. So you can parse this easily with any kind of a system that can read ASCII characters. So with this Mug Club card, we've got these numbers in, uh, sort of on the bottom of the card, and those same numbers show up on the screen whenever we swipe it. And we can step up to some, some bigger cards, Costco card. This one actually contains a, a full name, and you can see all the different data there. Uh, each card either has one track or two tracks, um, and some cards even have three tracks, depending on uh, what's on there. So on this particular card, we've got a track that contains the name, and then the lower track contains the account number. Uh, this reader is capable of reading all three tracks. And we can even have more fun with credit cards. Credit cards contain a track that obviously contains the credit card number, as well as the card holder's name. So we can see that very clearly in the ASCII text on the screen. Driver's license also have two tracks, and swiping them, we see it gives us the, the name, uh, the address, the birth date, uh, eye color, hair color, all sorts of interesting stuff. On any given card, whenever you swipe it with this card reader, all transmissions start with a percent sign and end with a question mark for the first track. For the second track, they start with a semicolon and end with a question mark. So you can always tell which track you're reading and you can always parse out the data by looking for a percent sign and looking for the question mark or the semicolon to figure out where the data is. So this is the magnetic card writer and the writer that we sell is a low coercivity writer. What that means is it's able to write to the cheaper cards, the cards like a club card or a grocery store card. It is not capable of writing to a credit card. On the magnetic writer, you can see the connectors look a little bit differently. We have RS-232 again, but we also have the circular connector. It's a PS2 connector, and the reason that is there is because we need it to capture power from the computer. So by plugging this into a PS2 port, it then powers the magnetic writer, whereas the RS-232 connector gives it the communication that it needs. On this particular laptop, we don't have a PS2 connector, and so we're gonna have to find an, an interesting way of hooking it up. In this particular case, we found uh, what's called a KVM switch, keyboard video monitor switch, uh, and we are going to use power from it. And you can see the unit is now powered. KVM keyboard video mouse, keyboard video mouse. The magnetic card writer also obviously acts as a reader and outputs serial information to the terminal window. Because the writer has more features, there's also a piece of software on our website called the EL03-CRW. It's a Windows program that allows us to uh, read from cards as well as write to cards. Uh, in this particular case, it's a Windows only program, but you can also use the API to talk to it from different operating systems. So I'm gonna shut down TerraTerm. So this is the demo software that the company that makes the writer has produced. And you simply connect to it, swipe a card, and it will tell you what's on track one and what's on track two. In this particular case, it is a grocery club card and it gives us the, the club card account number. 
On a driver's license, it parses track one and track two, so it's a little bit more readable than in a terminal program. Uh, in this case, it's Chris Rojas. So this is a Safeway Club Card. So you would use this inside the grocery store to get discounts on food. However, they connect your personal information to what you purchase. And that may or may not be a good thing depending on your privacy levels. So let's go ahead and swipe this. So on this particular card, you can see the last four digits are 6796, and on the screen, 6796. So if we wanted to change that and change one of the numbers, then the card would still work, but they would be unable to connect me to what I was purchasing. So let's go ahead and change that number. So we've taken the track two data and copied and pasted it into the track two data. And now I changed one of the last four digits from 6796 to 6756. And we're gonna click on the right button. Swipe the card again. It gives us the okay. Reads back the data, and sure enough, it's changed to 6756. So now when we go into the grocery store and use this card, it will still give us the discount, but it will say, thank you, mystery shopper. It won't know who's actually shopping, so we can protect some of our personal information that way. Now again, this is a low coercivity writer, so we can't change things like identification cards that have the higher coercivity strip on the back of the card. So we can read the data, but we're unable to write or change the data. So at SparkFun, we also sell the blank low coercivity cards. So this would be useful for um, writing some sort of data to the card. So from the writer, we can type in any kind of um, alphanumeric string that we want to put onto the card. Uh, we could use this as an entry system. We could use this as a checkout system. We could use this for any kind of identification purposes. So these are pretty cheap and easy to write to, and we can record whatever we want to it. This is now a copy of my Safeway card with the number changed.